I'm Paul Bait, I'm the Chief Executive of the UK Space Agency. Paul, welcome to Australia. Uh, great to have you here. So Paul, what do you see the main priorities between Australia and UK at the moment? So, there are so many things that we're already doing together. Uh, we've brought them all together uh, underneath the, uh, the banner of this space bridge between Australia and the UK. That allows us to kind of go forward together as governments, lets us do the regulations together, but it also means that our companies and our universities, our academics can collaborate. So everything from tracking Antarctic sea ice to the aqua watch work that gets done between Australia and the UK, that all comes together under that sort of single banner. And what do you think the current status is of the space bridge from both sides and what more can be done to improve those relationships? Oh yeah, so we think it's going really well. So you think we've started with a quarter of a million pounds of funding matched by uh, Australian counterparts. So that's relatively small amounts and then we put in a, an extra million pounds uh, and then that's sort of driven forward by our international bilateral fund. And that's a deliberate piece of funding by the UK Space Agency, 20 million pounds available to countries around the world but with a particular focus on Australia as well as Canada, the US and Japan and that's led to eight different projects being funded through, um, uh, through that collaboration. So it's really just growing and growing. Terrific. And if we start talking about downstream applications of space, how do you find the understanding in the UK is of the applications of space in downstream sectors? Yeah, so we have that kind of complete spectrum from no understanding at all through to some of companies who are working well outside the traditional space sector but making use of that space data and understanding it. But you know, the truth is that you know, everyone navigates around by sat-nav and they might even not think about what that means, satellite navigation. Um, we did a study in the UK recently that if we were to lose that navigation signal, that GPS signal, it would cost the UK more than a billion pounds a day. So, you know, the truth is obviously it's just fantastically important that we have those space applications. But we're definitely seeing a bit of disconnect where there are so many uh, farmers, financiers, transport companies whose business models would be transformed or improved by using more space data. And part of the job of the space agency is to connect those customers to our space companies and for them to talk the same language so that the you know, at the end of the day, do you really care if the data comes from space or somewhere else? You care passionately if you're the space company, not so much if you're providing a service to, uh, to the farming community or transportation. So we really need to help people have those good conversations that lead to the better use of space data. Terrific. In terms of the sustainability of businesses within the space sector, there's a lot of uh, startups, there's a lot of new businesses from that point of view. Um, sometimes what we see is a lot of them are going after government grants and one customer, which is a government customer. What's the experience in the UK in that particular area? So we do see some companies which are, would be at risk of becoming grant dependent. And we really encourage that not to happen. So it's one of the things the Space Agency has been doing over the last two years, saying what we're about is catalyzing investment into the UK. So that can't just be giving a grant and the company succeeding on the basis of that grant alone. It's catalyzing, it's bringing in more contract revenue and more capital investment as a result of the grants that we give. So that, that becomes a, a condition or a, a factor in who we give the money to. And we take companies like Satellite View in the UK, we gave them a relatively small grant on the scheme of things. That helped catalyze their, their entire investment record. And so they credit the, uh, the UK Space Agency grant with bringing in so much more money than they would otherwise have got. Those are the sorts of success stories on the revenue side, the contracts, and on the capital generation we want to see so much more of. Terrific, and looking forward, what does the space industry look like for you in 10 years time in the UK? So we're already uh, quite good at complex payloads at building small satellites. We've got a budding launch industry. And of course we do a lot of work in Earth observation. But what we know is that some of those markets are going to get bigger and bigger, communications for example, and we recently announced an extra £160 million to support payload design development in the UK because we know that the world is moving from geo to LEO satellites. But we're also seeing the lunar economy develop, so we're seeing these new markets are in uh, in situ resource utilisation, in orbit service and manufacture. You know, we're excited about everything from space, nuclear to space, solar. So whether they are markets that are already developed, whether they are growing, or whether they're truly nascent, 
We really think that the, uh, the future of high-tech jobs and growth in the economy is going to be increasingly driven by space because it affects all our lives. And in terms of, as a, as a final question, uh, preparing the, the industry for the future, what does workforce development look like and what do the future generations start to look like? Yeah, so we've got 49,000 people working in the space sector in the UK. We know we need another 30,000 jobs by the end of the decade just to deal with the growth that we're already seeing. That can't start um, only at the level of mid-career people, although it's fantastic when people do come in from adjacent sectors. We really need to build that pipeline of skills up from the very early age that starts at primary schools, making sure that uh, people have the opportunity, kids, wherever they are around the country, whatever um, aspirations they have, and girls as much as boys are able to see their future in STEM and perhaps in space. And then through to the internships, we already have over 100 spin turns, as we call them, uh, where the UKSA is uh, supporting the placement of, uh, of postgraduate students and graduate students into industry, all the way through to those kind of really uh, specialised RF engineering skills and increasingly artificial intelligence and machine learning skills that we really do need. So it's a, it's a tough environment, right? But what a nice problem to have. But a fast growing sector that we need that talent. The truth is, space is for everyone. So whether you're a designer, or a journalist, a financier, let alone an engineer, a mathematician, or a scientist, there's something in space for you. So I always say, come and join us. Fantastic. Dr. Paul Back, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.